Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to implement a machine learning algorithm on the big math sales dataset that is available on Kaggle and build a prediction model using this dataset. Now, if you want to know how to perform in-depth data analysis on this dataset, I have done a separate video on this topic and I will be adding all the links in the description down below. Before moving forward, if you like my content, please do leave a like and smash that subscribe button and turn on bell notification to stay updated each time I upload a new video. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So, we are importing pandas and numpy for basic data operations, we are importing matplotlib and cbonds for displaying the plots, we are importing style to set the style for our plots and here we are using the style as cbond. Then we are importing label encoders to normalize the labels, then we are importing train test split to split the data into training and testing sets. Then we are importing the different models that we are going to use. So here is the linear regression, XGBooster regressor and random forest regressor. Then finally, we are importing the different accuracy matrices to measure the model accuracy and evaluate the model performance. Now that we have imported the required libraries, let's read the data from the CSV file. And then let's visualize the data using the head function. So that gives us an idea of the data that we are dealing with. Now let's analyze the data further. We will start with the info method. This gives us the number of rows, the columns, the number of null values and the data type of the different attributes in the data set. On analyzing this information further, we can see that there are some null values in our dataset and our data type consists of both categorical and numerical features. Now let's get a count of the different data types in our dataset. That is, let us see how many categorical and numerical entries are there in our dataset. So that gives us an idea of the different categorical and numerical entries in our dataset. As we can see, there are 7 categorical features in the dataset and 5 numerical features. Now let us get the statistical details of all the entries in our dataset. To do this, we can use the describe method. 
So this returns us the statistical details of the dataset such as the min, max, standard deviation, etc. Alright, so let's look at dealing with null values. So let's get a count of the different null values in a dataset using the isNull method. So now we have a sum of all the null values in the different columns and only two columns have null values in them. Let's analyze these columns further. So let's look at the first column with the missing values, item weight. Item weight is a numerical field and let's see if this column contains any outliers. So to do this, let's plot a box plot for the item weight. So by analyzing the box plot, we can see that there are no outliers for this column. So let's replace the missing values in this column using the mean values. Hopefully, that should have replaced all the null values in the item weight column. We'll verify that in a minute. Let's modify the next column containing the null values that is the outlet size. We know that the outlet size is a categorical data. So let's visualize this data using a count plot. So from this we can understand that there are three different sizes for the outlets in our dataset that is small, medium and high. Now let's check for null values once more to see if the null values have been replaced. That's great. All the null values have been replaced in the dataset. So let's now analyze the different categorical columns in our dataset starting with the item fat content. So to do this, let's get the value count for different entries in this column. There seems to be an issue here. So basically when we look at this data, we can see that there are only two different fat categories. But in our dataset, this is represented by different notations and as a result we have five different categories. So we need to fix this issue. So let's use the replace method to replace the different labels. Now let's analyze the item fat content column once more. And as we can see, the labels have been replaced. Similarly, let's analyze some of the different categorical columns. Now let's perform label encoding on the different categorical data. Label encoding is done to convert the categorical data into numerical format. What it does basically is, 
it takes a categorical value and converts it into a numerical value. So first, let's load the label encoder. Now let's label encode the different categorical columns. Now, if you use the info method once more, we can see that all the categorical values are converted into numerical values. If you want to see the data, you can use the head function. Now you can see the modified data. Now let's split the data into X and Y. That is, let's separate the target data. So for this data set, the outlet sales will be our target data. Now let's print the shape of X and Y. Now let's split the data into training and testing set. Here I'm going to take a test size of 30 percentage. Now let's print the size of the training and testing sets. Now that we have processed this data, let's use this data to train a machine learning model. Let's first train the data on a linear regression model. So here we are loading the linear regression model, then we are fitting the X train and Y train on the linear regression model, then we are predicting the values for the given test data. Now let's evaluate the linear regression model performance. To do this, let's calculate the mean absolute error and the R2 score. R2 score is a metric that tells the performance of the model and is usually in the range of 0 to 1. Now let's print these values.
Now let's train the data on the gradient boosting algorithm XGBoost. We can see that the XGBoost model gives a better model performance when compared to the linear regression model. Now let's train the model on the random forest model. Now that is interesting, the RF model gives a better accuracy than the previous two models. So let's tune the random forest model further to see if we can still improve the model performance. So to do this, let's perform hyperparameter tuning on the random forest model. We can see that there is a slight improvement in the model performance. Now that we have trained and tested the model, let's build a prediction system. So let's create sample data to predict the target which is the sales. For reference, I am taking the data in a data set to make the sample data. So I am using the head function once again. And then I am getting the column names. And now let's add the sample data. Let's set an index for this data. Let's put this in a pandas data frame. Now that we have the new data, let's predict the outlet sales value for this data. Note that I am going to use the XGBoost model as it gives the best model performance. So now we have the predicted sales value for our new data. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea of implementing machine learning on the Big Math sales dataset available on Kaggle. Make sure to follow me on my social media handles to stay updated for more interesting content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.